You know what really bugs me? Why do dogs die so young? The number one question that has plagued me my entire veterinary career, why do dogs die so young? As a veterinarian, I'm confronting diseases like cancer and heart failure and kidney disease and these that rob our dogs of life far too early. We don't have data on how long dogs really live. Now it's getting better seeing groups like Banfield and VCA, they're now getting good data. It's still a bit of a guess as to how long a dog should live. Mixed breed dogs, for example, small, medium, even some of the larger uh, breeds live an average 11 years. Mixed breed dogs that are over 90 pounds live maybe eight years of age. In general, smaller dogs tend to live longer than bigger dogs. This is a question that has puzzled scientists forever. Even to the turn of the century, there was a theory proposed that mammals were good for about 1 billion heartbeats and then game over. Some of these larger animals with slower heart rates tended to live longer. Think elephants and tortoises. Whereas the smaller animals with a more rapid heart rate tended to live very short life expectancies like mice. There are really two main competing theories of aging. The first theory is sort of this thing of programmed death. That means that there are mechanisms, whether they're DNA or telomeres, or there's something within your cells, within our pets that dies. So the kidney fails. The brain dies. You, your pet, dies. Program theory of death. And I've always struggled with this because it doesn't make sense from an evolutionary standpoint. It's why would a species build in an expiration date? What if you're a really good species? Wouldn't you want to live a long time to spread your DNA as long as possible? Second main theory of aging is the error or damage theory. And that just means that over time you accumulate damage to your DNA or your cells and so you wear things out. This makes a lot of sense, especially to those of us that believe that we might actually be able to stall or delay or maybe even avoid some of the bad downsides of aging, we're really focusing on one thing, and oxidative damage. And those are the little toxins that accumulate as a byproduct of cellular metabolism that we incur every day that can then damage our cells. If you can help avoid, then you will live longer and maybe avoid some diseases. Why do I say all of this? It's because we don't talk about this in veterinary medicine. I've actually recently started an initiative on the vet side, which is why we're having this conversation. And I want you to check out something that I started in early 2015. It's called Project 25, and the website is below. And in 2015, I was at a major international congress in Barcelona, Spain. I was uh, honored to give one of the presentations. I actually came out and I said, why don't dogs live to be 25 years of age? The crowd is kind of stunned. But it's a reasonable question. Why don't dogs live to be 25? Heck, why don't they live to be 50 or longer? I don't have the answers, but until we start asking the questions as a profession, we aren't gonna make any progress. On the human side, these types of questions are being asked on a daily basis. You can't turn on your morning news shows without somebody coming on and saying, here's a way to fight aging, here's a way to live longer, here's a way to be healthier. In the veterinary world, if you say, I'm interested in helping cats live to be 35 years of age, I want to make it safe for veterinarians and scientists, technologists to talk about anti-aging strategies in pets. Because there's one other little caveat to all of this. People say to me all the time, well, I don't want to live to be 130 years of age if the last 30 or 40 years are suffering. I don't want my dog to live to be 25 years of age if he's going to be miserable for the last half of his life. That's not anti-aging. What we're talking about doing is a concept known as squaring off the curve. And that means that you reach your peak optimal health status. So maybe in human terms, it's like uh, around 18 to 21 and you stay there. Basically, you live this long, awesome life. You stay at the top part of the curve and then maybe the last month or so, you die. That's what we're talking about for pets. Just to live this longer higher quality of life because for me, the only reason that I'm having this conversation is because I'm interested in improving and enhancing the longevity and quality of life of our pets. This isn't about living longer, it's about living better longer. There's some simple things you can do today. Number one, 
Keep your dog at a lean weight. Obesity kills. It accelerates this oxidative stress and damage to cells. So if you're gonna do anything, really pay attention to nutrition and keep your dogs lean and trim. Number two, exercise regularly. Regular exercise can extend longevity and certainly improve quality of life. And then finally, make sure that you see your veterinarian regularly to look for the earliest signs of disease. I can't tell you how many times I diagnose disease when it's just too late. Disease is going to happen. My job is to recognize it as early as possible so that I can intervene as successfully as possible. I want you to make sure that you're seeing your vet for routine screening tests so that they're doing blood and urine analysis so we can pick up the earliest signs of diabetes, of kidney kidney disease, of liver dysfunction, of hormonal imbalances. All of those simple tests can tell me so much and help me make little tweaks to help extend quality of life. If you enjoy content like this, subscribe below. Thank you so much.